Hi everyone, and welcome back to our Automation in Cloud App Security series. My name is Caroline Lee, and of course, I'm joined by Sebastian Mullendyke. We're both program managers within our cloud and AI security customer experience team. If it's your first time tuning in on this series, definitely go check out our last couple of videos. This is where we showcase how to use our integrations between MCAS and Power Automate to configure flow templates for our most advanced use cases. So today we're going to be focusing on the remove malicious inbox forwarding rule template. All right, so within Cloud App Security today, we actually have a built-in anomaly detection policy to trigger an alert when there's malicious inbox forwarding going on in a user's inbox. So you can see on the right-hand side, there's currently a rule in place to forward any messages that arrive in this user's inbox to that suspicious email address. So Cloud App Security will send you an alert when this occurs in your environment, but we've taken it one step further by creating a flow template to actually auto disable this rule if it's found. So now let's get into a demo. I'm gonna hand it off to Sebastian to walk you through how he's created this flow template today. Seb, I'll hand it to you. Thank you, Caroline. So I'm going to explain here the different steps that we're going through in this specific workflow. So the first thing that we have here is an alert being generated by Cloud App Security. So this is the, uh, the, the alert that will be generated by your inbox rules detection. The next thing that I do is to initialize two variables, one containing your Cloud App Security tenant URL, and the next one is to use the API token value that you generated using the Cloud App Security portal. After that, I'm going to use the compromised entity information coming from my alert. So basically it's going to be the user principal name to call Microsoft Graph and obtain from Azure Active Directory more details on the user, like the email address uh, the, and a few other uh, object properties. And the next operation that I'm doing is getting the user manager information from Office 365 to be able to reuse that information later when I'm going to send an email to the user in the user manager explaining the action that we automatically took. The next action is calling the Cloud App Security API. So if we look at this specific action, you can see that I'm calling Cloud App Security API and I'm using the provider alert ID. This is the internal alert ID from Cloud App Security obtained from the trigger at the beginning of the workflow. And what I'm doing here is actually calling the API to obtain more information than what we have by default in the alert in Power Automate. Let me pivot to my uh, Cloud App Security portal to show you exactly the details that you have first in the portal. So this is the alert that we're talking about. And you can see this uh, here by looking at uh, the details on the compromised user. And you can see also from Cloud App Security that there is a malicious inbox rule for writing email to badguy at xyz.com. If I go now in Postman to have a look at the API calls uh, that, uh, that we have in the workflow, what you can see here is that when I'm collecting the details on this alert, so the alert that we have from Cloud App Security, we obtain different type information like the entities. And the entities can be of different type. They can be user, they can be IP addresses, but the one that we really care about is this one, the entities of type rule name. So rule name will show us the name of the different inbox rules that we'll uh, reuse later on when we're going to perform the next action. So this is why we're calling the MCAS API to obtain this value. So we know that the name of the malicious inbox rules is three dot, 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 dot. Let's go back to Power Automate to have a look at the next steps. So after collecting that information, I'm parsing the JSON to reuse this value uh, a bit further, and I'm filtering the array to have only the entities of type rule name that we just discussed about when we were looking at Postman. The next thing that we're doing is calling Microsoft API so we're calling graph and we're going to search in the user mailbox for an inbox rules that has the name matching 
what we obtain from the get MCAS alerts action. So this specific call, if I go back to Postman, is going to look like this. So I'm going to call my graph and I'm going to search for the, for the rule that matches dot, dot, dot. Coming back from graph, you will obtain this JSON and this JSON is going to provide you details like the conditions. So you can see here that the malicious inbox rules is searching for, for words like uh, bank, credit card, money, or confidential in the subject or the body. It's forwarding the emails to badguy at xyz.com. But what's really interesting here is that we have this internal graph ID, A, Q, A, 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 etc. So this information is required for the next step that we'll have in the workflow. That's why we had to perform this operation to obtain this specific rule ID. Let's go back to flow. And from here, you can see that after calling the API to get the inbox rule ID, we have a condition. So if the rule was found, so this is what we have here. So if the size of the answer is uh, greater than zero, so it means that we obtained some answer. If there is nothing to return, we are not going to do any action. And this will occur only if someone like you or another administrator dis dis uh, removed sorry, the rule from the user mailbox. But if the rule is still there, what we're going to do is to disable the inbox rule. Uh, we're going to call Microsoft Graph API. And you can see that here this time, we're not searching for a specific rule details. We're going to patch the rule using the ID that we obtained before and changing the value of the property is enabled to false. So basically we're just disabling the inbox rule in the user mailbox. The next step is to resolve the alert in Cloud App Security and providing a resolution command as resolved using Microsoft Flow inbox rules disabled and sending an email to the user and the user manager to let them know that we applied automatically a remediation action and disabling this inbox rule. We also provide here the details of the inbox rule, so the body the action that you see here, to let them know exactly what we had in this rule. In case this was a false positive, at least your user and the user manager knows what the value was. And because we didn't remove the rule, but just disabled it, they can easily re-enable this rule. Back to you, Caroline, for the demo now. Awesome, thanks, Seb. So now I'm gonna walk you guys through how to actually test this flow and what it would look like from the end user perspective. So right now I'm logged in as Julian Isla, and I'm going to show you my current Outlook settings. So under rules, you can see that I have a rule that's been created to forward any messages to the suspicious email address. So now I'm going to kick off the flow that Seb just walked you through. So I'm going to test this using our last run data. So let's test this out. And you'll see check marks as it goes through each step in the flow process and it's done. So if I go back to Julian's mailbox, we can see that we got an email. So we receive an email from our admin that was sent to both Julian and his manager, Jeff, indicating that there was a malicious inbox rule that had been disabled. If we look back into the Outlook settings, we can see that the rule has been disabled here as well. Now let's take a look at what we would see in Cloud App Security. So here I filter the alerts to the suspicious inbox forwarding alert. And I'm going to click on this one. And we can see at the top that this alert has been resolved due to the flow that we created specifically to disable these inbox rules. You can still get details around the alert and reopen it if needed. Thank you so much for tuning in and please come back next time for our next video. Thank you.